Recording in progress. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Welcome everybody. Please take your seats, we're starting. Thank you very much for being with us today and uh, welcome to IGF 2022 in Addis Ababa. 
Welcome to also Town Hall 98 launch of the Coalition for Digital Africa with ICANN, the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers. My name is Anne Rochelle Ine, and I'm the Regional Director for ITU in Africa, based here in Addis Ababa, and I'm going to be moderating uh, this panel that is going to tell us about the superb things that ICANN and partners are doing on this continent for the sake of uh, real, impactful, meaningful infrastructure. So welcome again, and uh, the session is going to be 60 minutes. Uh, we've already eaten up 15 minutes, so hopefully you'll bear with us because uh, I think the next one is uh, lunchtime for, uh, for all of you. Um, well, I have here as panelists, Mr. Joran Marby, uh, Mr. Pierre Danginu, Prof. Olusola, Mr. John Omo, and they will quickly introduce themselves when they start, and then Barak, is Barak around? Yes, <laughs> Barak Otieno. Thank you all for being here. So, um, the point of this session is really to allow, you know, partners of, um, of ICANN and uh, also the project to be introduced to you, to tell you what is going to happen next, and hope for all of your, um, not only cooperation, but active cooperation and truly uh, meaningful, again, impact uh, for the continent. So uh, without further ado, since we are probably going to be um, uh, looking for time, I'm gonna pass the floor to Joran so he can uh, introduce himself very briefly for the sake of all of the non-converts that are here, because I see a lot of familiar faces, <laughs> and um, give us his uh, introductory remarks. Thank you. These are going to be short. You always start with that, but you're going to talk at length. My name is Jura Marby. I have the honor to be the ICANN president and CEO, and I'm really happy to be here. So many of you, I recognize many of you, but I also know that you're active IGF, and here, at the IGF, you talk about this thing called the internet all the time. So I'm going to talk about the internet as a technology because that's actually what we are. So every time you go online, you hit about something that either originates from ICANN or its technical partner. It's the IP address, it's the IP pro protocol, and the DNS. Uh, we are, you're not alone in that because today we have about 5.3 billion users um, in the world doing it. And interesting enough that uh, Africa is one of the fastest growing users of those technologies today. Um, you've gone from less to about close to 50% in just a couple, in a decade or something, and you should be very proud of that. But to be able to take the next step, we also have to think differently. We have to do things differently. And Africa as an energy region is very unique. And that means that we have to figure out new ways of working together. This coalition, with other ones we present more, is about finding new ways of making a difference on a more local level to make people working together to f not always fix the biggest problems, but actually fix those problems that is essential for people in Africa. There's one thing that's important for me, is that uh, Internet for Africa is for Africans and by Africans. You're the ones who should be the decision makers, you're the ones who have the knowledge and skill to solve any problems that exist here. I'm very happy to set up this organization to support that. <coughs> and that's why I'm gonna leave over to my friends over here. Thank you very much, Joran. Um, you heard him. For Africans, with Africans. I will add, by Africans. So let's make it work. Pierre, you're next. Thank you very much, uh, Rachel, and uh, very good morning to everyone. I'm Pierre Dangino, Vice President in charge of uh, stakeholder engagement, and particularly in charge of uh, uh, coordinating uh, what we call the uh, ICANN Africa strategy in Africa. Um, just happy to uh, be again with you, recognizing uh, so many friends here. Um, just wanted to highlight the fact that uh, what we are doing here today, in fact, is a kind of continuation of something that really uh, started some uh, kind of 10 years ago. Um, also reminds me that uh, exactly 1993 we were here. Uh, 
uh, as I come to actually talk about something at that time which we call, uh, was it, uh, I mean, multi-stakeholder internet governance, you know, works. And uh, in fact, that was uh, uh, when we really came up with the idea that uh, we should make sure that we establish a few activities here to promote, you know, digital um, <coughs> transformation in Africa. And by doing this, we were actually having a few sort of ideas, and that boils into what we call the strategy uh, for Africa. Uh, strategy that uh, the community, actually, the uh, internet community here from Africa, um, uh, actually designed. And what we've been doing so far was to kind of uh, implement those um, projects. I'm not going to go through those projects because that's not what uh, you know we are here to do. Uh, but suffice to uh, say that uh, some of the things we were able to do that time was, for instance, the the study uh, we did on the DNS, you know, DNS market, you know, in Africa, uh, five six years ago. And you, the community, wanted us to update this document, for instance, which has been done. I mean, it's it's ongoing now, and you are going to have you know a new version of this uh, of this study, which is crucial for you to have any idea or picture of what is happening on the DNS front, because ICANN is about DNS, actually. Um, so we did a few things, basically, of course, in terms of capacity uh, development in so many areas, um, DNSSEC, for instance, for security you know, of the DNS. Um, so the coalition we are going to launch here is right, is a continuation, in fact, but also is a landmark uh, in terms of uh, um, what am I called promoting digital transformation in Africa? Um, the coalition has um, kind of three, I would say, uh, pillars here. Uh, and, uh, um, one of the, the pillars, the first one is about, you know, the uh, it's about accessibility. In fact, uh, where you do have those infrastructure. So the first one is going to be uh, how you beef up the infrastructure in such a way that uh, all of those you know, who are still needing to be connected, you know. Um, could make it, you know, quite easily. We found out that uh, with the DNS infrastructure, of course, so within this environment, we can make a difference. And this is already, we already you know, seen this in one of the projects that we launched, you know, in, uh, 15 days ago in uh, Namibia, <coughs> which is about the uh, internet, you know, managed, you know, um, root server, a cluster, which is quite important, that's keeping, you know, uh, African traffic and data within Africa. Uh, not uh, sending it outside Africa and then coming back. This is something that we did. Uh, we are already seeing this interest. And uh, we didn't do it on our own. We did have, you know, our partners on the ground. We can provide details on that. This is about the infrastructure. Uh, the second one is about meaningful sort of usage, or I would say access accessibility to the internet. Uh, it's about your mi uh, multilingualism. It's about how you eventually develop your own script so that your own language you could, could be online. We do have projects on that one as well. And uh, we do have partners. We do have Africa, of African Association of African Universities. Uh, um, the representative is here, Professor Olushelu, is going to actually talk about it uh, soon. Um, we also have other projects, for instance, I, I spoke about the security you know, of the DNS. We have a project on that one. We do have partners. We are still <coughs> looking for more partners to make sure that you do sign your zone file. 54 African countries today, less than 15 of them have signed their zone file. Uh, signing your zone file meaning that you are making your destination you know, secure. So it's important that this be done. So we do have a project that's going to really I mean, uh, uh, deal with the technology that it uh, takes to be able to kind of uh, sign your zone file. This one also is part of the whole uh, coalition thing. Um, a few of us that we are going to develop as we move on uh, on this uh, three years uh, program. And of course, Professor was asking me about, you know, <coughs> sustainability, ownership, and all of this is going to be built within uh, the system as we move on. So in a nutshell, that's uh, what I would like to say as far as the coalition is concerned. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre. On a personal note, I'm going to tell you a little anecdote. Um, in 1997, conference room three, right here in Uneka, 
So Pierre and I, sitting at the same table, one of the only ladies, <laughs> writing the Africa Information Society initiative that took into account the creation of Afrinic AFTLD, Afren, Afri ISPA, and basically all of the internet organizations that uh, we're having today on the continent. Thank you very much. But I am glad to see this coalition today because we've definitely all failed at something since today the continent is still at 33% connectivity. So going it alone has lived. It's got to be together to go far. And I'm really, really glad to see the African Association of Universities here represented so they can do their part. Prof, up thank to you. you. Thank you very much. Just as you, ju you said, it's very important that universities in Africa come on board this initiative. I represent the Association of African Universities, and indeed we stand as the voice of higher education in the continent. This is not our first time of being involved in the internet ecosystem. For a long time, the Association of African Universities has been promoting the need to build infrastructures in Africa, the need to develop policies, and the need to harness the capacity of ICT to improve access to quality education in the continent. I remember in 2007, we started an initiative at AU for the establishment of national research education networks. And many of us today, we've seen the impact of the inrents in different cities in Africa. Beyond this, the Association of African Universities is committed to capacity building and education on internet-related activities. All of us, we agree that capacity for internet-related issues in Africa is still relatively low and this needs to be enhanced. I've had many people say today that Africa has the youngest and growing educated workforce needing higher education consumption of online services. You cannot uh, deny the fact that our youths are hungry to be connected. Our youths are looking forward to development of the internet capabilities within the African continent. In the last session that we had, I enumerated some challenges facing the internet ecosystem in Africa. I ind indicated that the lack of access to reliable and affordable el electricity is major in this continent. We still today have poor internet accessibility in different places. We are having low internet infrastructures. This one area that we need to work on, our capacity to afford bandwidth needed to run our internet system is still questionable. And then we have the need to build the capacity. As I mentioned earlier on, the Association of African Universities is bringing the academia to get involved in internet activities within the continent. We are happy to join this coalition for our own members, the universities in Africa, including the research networks in Africa, to have their platforms to be in compliance to the universal acceptance of domain names in the continent. When we were going to join this uh, coalition, I asked myself, what are the benefits that will come out of this coalition? What are the things we should expect from this coalition? One, we expect that this coalition will help us to enhance internet infrastructure. We also expect that this coalition that we are entering today 
will increase the rate of internet access within the continent and also enhance internet security in Africa. We hope that it's going to improve the participation and contributions from Africa in the multi-stakeholder policy-making processes at the global level. Situations where we do not have African voice at this global level is not okay, and therefore we need to get involved. Capacity building for entrepreneurship. Our people are yearning to enhance the benefit of the internet to promote, to be innovative and to promote digital trade and economy is very high right now. I hope that this coalition will help us to strengthen and improve the domain name system in Africa. I hope that a day will come when my language will be used and the domain name for some institutions in Africa. We hope that this collaboration will generally promote digital inquisitivity for Africa, which will create opportunities for Africa to build local contents and build real internet-based uh, internet businesses within the continent. As mentioned earlier on by the Mr. Perry, we in AAU, we have a particular project that we've started already and we hope that we'll be able to launch this project in the next few months. I really look, with the launch we're having today, we told ourselves that we're just doing the launch today, but as we are launching, we are going to action. In the next few months and years, we hope to work together and to see how we can impact our continent. All we are doing is to build Africa, and all we are doing is to build the future of Africa, and I hope that this coalition will not fail. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Olusola. My uh, next speaker is John Omo. John works for an organization that is very important for this continent. And he's going to tell you a little bit about it, I'm pretty sure, and uh, tell us why, or as Prof said earlier, what's in it for ATU joining this coalition? John? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anne, uh, Rochelle. Thank you very much, uh, fellow panelists and the audience. I, my name is John Omo. I work for African Telecommunications Union. Uh, this union has been around since 1977 when it was established by uh, heads of state and government uh, as, as a union uh, bringing basically at the time uh, government uh, together in terms of development of telecommunications uh, in Africa. As the uh, organization of African unity transformed into African Union, and then the ministers also transformed the organization from uh, Pan-African Telecommunications Union to African Telecommunications Union. Uh, currently, we have a membership of uh, 50 out of the 54 African countries. And we also increasingly have uh, a very vibrant uh, civil society and private uh, sector membership in our organization. In fact, a lot more than uh, the member states, uh, nearly 60 of them, most of them are organizations that have their roots outside of this continent. And the major players, whether manufacturers, whether civil societies, whether the private sector that operate uh, uh, in Africa. And so our business is to coordinate the development of ICTs in Africa uh, amongst governments and of course working with the private sector and the civil uh, society and also representing or organizing African uh, governments in uh, international ICT for uh, largely the international uh, telecommunications uh, uh, union. Now uh, I'm certainly very excited to be part of, of this coalition. Uh, and I will tell you why I mentioned this during the, the press conference. But as I say, we, we bring uh, uh, on board the 50 or so 
uh, African governments to the coalition and, and also uh, 57 uh, private sector organizations and, and civil society and, and, and uh, you know, uh, community-based organizations. I think <coughs> uh, during this conference, you have had quite a bit uh, in terms of what each and every organization is trying to do for purposes of ICT development in Africa. And as I mentioned in another forum this morning, uh, there's so much, so, so much attention about Africa and uh, for good reasons. Someone once said in a negative sense that he who conquers Africa will conquer the world. <coughs> and I, I, see, uh, I see the value that the internet brings to Africa's development as, as tremendous. And Africans must latch onto it in terms of how we will bring our people on, onto the grid uh, in terms of selling their ideas, in terms of selling uh, and trading and participating meaningfully uh, on the internet space. The, the unfortunate thing, which is why I, I see this coalition as important, is that uh, we have worked so, so much in silos. We have worked so, so much in silos. Uh, I mentioned earlier on that as far as I know, there are about six or seven coalitions about Africa. Six or so seven coalitions about Africa. And the question that we must ask ourselves is, is really whether these coalitions are for Africa or for the interests of those that are coalescing uh, about Africa. And I think the benefit uh, that uh, this uh, brings is, is it seeks to work with each and every one of us, be they government, be they the civil society, be they the private sector that work on the internet space uh, in Africa for purposes of Africa's uh, development and participation meaningfully uh, into this space. There's so much competition rather than cooperation. And I think we must then uh, bring on board the various uh, you know, initiatives uh, that seem to want to speak for or about Africa or develop uh, Africa's participation in the internet space into some sort of, you know, a dialogue so that we then say, is this about competition or is it about us cooperating to develop the continent for Africans and not so much for those that are coalescing uh, to uh, further their interests about Africa. And so I'm, I'm so, so excited about what ICANN has done, that this is about Africa, by Africans, for Africa. And I think in that sense, then we need to get on board and see that we bring all our various initiatives, all our institutional capacities in order to bear on the development of internet and participation of Africa in the internet space for, for Africans. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Uh, John is talking to us about an aspect that is uh, absolutely crucial on this continent. Um, there isn't much that we can do without decision makers and governments. And uh, I, I seem to think that traditionally it's one of the things that, uh, you know, in the technical community, we've always been kind of uh, afraid of uh, really bringing on board. So I'm happy to see that, uh, you know, the institutional part is uh, here. Another institutional, actually, piece that supports the institutional part is um, top level domains. And my next speaker is Barack Otino. Barack, if you can introduce yourself and tell us what's in it for AFTLD. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Rochelle, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Barack Otieno. I represent the Africa Top Level Domains Organization, the home of African country code top level domain registries. And um, I want to highlight a few things. First is to commend um, ICANN, 
uh, for leading uh, the creation of this coalition. As the Honorable SG has said, um, yes, there have been many coalitions, but I think there have been attempts to move us forward. And just picking up on another comment that you made, and Rachel, um, even if we have failed, we must keep failing forward. That's what I would wish to submit. So um, failure is an important part of life. Um, allow me to mention some statistics as I make my submission, um, because it's important that we deal with facts as we move ahead. Insofar as country called top level domain registries are concerned, which is a subset of the domain name ecosystem globally, uh, firstly, there are approximately 360 million domains registered across all top level domains globally. Uh, of this, over 80% of the registrations are actually within the European region. Uh, the African continent accounts for a paltry 1% uh, uh, of total registration globally. So this is um, a challenge to us who are seated in this room uh, that our work is really cut out. In the statistics, and um, CCTLDs account for 134.1 million. Um, and uh, you can see the bulk of the registrations is actually in .coms and .nets, which are at 174 million. If you look at the statistics further, internet world stats, approximately 500 million um, citizens on the African continent uh, are said to be accessing the internet. Maybe this is the 40% that Anne Rachel alluded to. And um, of this, most of them are on social media apps. Uh, I don't think it's meaningful access, or it's what we would say uh, is meaningful access, because if you look at it vis-a-vis -vis the number of domain names registered, uh, then the numbers uh, don't really add up. And I was just looking at recent statistics from the ITU, the 2022 report, that only 40% individuals use the internet in Africa. And as we move forward, what is key is strengthening institutions that are working within the internet space in Africa. Uh, I'm glad, Anne Rachel, you've mentioned about the Africa Information Society Initiative, um, which paved way for creation of um, the AFSTARS, or African Internet Organizations. Most of us are familiar of AFRINIC, because without numbers, we can't do much on the internet. Uh, but there is Africa Top Level Domains Organization, there is Africa SAT, among many other internet organizations that have been created to address different issues or different aspects of the internet. And I'll dwell on AFTLD as I try to conclude my remarks. When I joined AFTLD in 2010, I got a strategic plan from my predecessor and I got a research report that had been done in 2008, which at that time showed that more than 50% of country called top level domain registries in Africa were being managed from outside the African continent. And in an initiative similar to this, um, a number of organizations, uh, the Internet Society, and uh, I think also led by ICANN came together and uh, created a registry operations curriculum, which is still in use as we speak in different parts of the world. Uh, which formed the basis for the capacity building initiatives that we did in various African countries. And I'm glad to report that as we speak, over 90% of country called top level domain registries 10 years later are being managed from within the African continent. We have very few remaining, and by Africans for that matter, let me add that. Again, thanks to the efforts by ICANN, and the other partners who are in the room, NSRC, the Internet Society, who have again come together for this coalition to make sure that we move to the next phase. In this particular coalition, there are 10 CCTLDs that have been identified, uh, which still have a few challenges here and there. And uh, through this initiative, we are going to make sure that at least 100% of the CCTLDs are now being managed from within the African continent but not just managed, but that they are sustainable entities. I think all of you are familiar with the Dot Africa initiative, which is 
managed by African entities or technical entities. And the role of CCTLDs cannot be underestimated. Any country that has a strong CCTLD definitely has a strong internet ecosystem. I think statistics don't lie. Look at CCTLDs that are doing very well and look at the local internet communities and you'll see the vibrancy. I would wish to stop at that and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much, uh, Barak. Barak gave us numbers that are um, very, very um, telling, but also, you know, uh, insightful in terms of uh, where we come from and uh, basically where we want to go. So this coalition is here to actually do that. One of the reasons why we're here to explain what it is is that we want more people to be part of it. We want more research um, universities. We want more um, top-level domains in Africa to be resilient infrastructures that can truly support what we're looking at in terms of uh, making sure that Africa has its own, can use its data, that it stays home, that it empowers its people. So this is really the foundation of this coalition, to make sure that there is infrastructure that is meaningful, that can be more than anything, I think, affordable. ITU just uh, released its uh, facts and figures of the internet. You can find the report online. And it's very telling when it comes to the African region. As Barak said, we have our work cut out. So um, I'm going to open the floor. If you have questions, please raise your hands. If it is about uh, the coalition, one of our partners, uh, in passing, I'm really hoping that you know ITU, for example, will be part of this coalition also. So, you know, invite. Uh, <laughs> Our, uh, as you know, that we just finished our plenipotentiary conference and we're changing guards inside ITU. So we're hoping that uh, you know this is something that definitely we can join because it's absolutely important. It's part of uh, our uh, job of uh, also connecting the world and connecting Africa as one of the continents that has the least uh, uh, connectivity. So any questions around? Uh, at the back there, so do we have a mic? mic? Yeah, okay. Please introduce yourself. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, my name is Kweku Entry. I work for the African Open Data and Internet Research Foundation. And I'd like to commend you on what you're doing. And basically, I think um, one thing that we also need to be um, thinking about is also about the smaller grassroots in connecting in terms of community networks and also small operators who are able to connect um, small communities. So uh, this is just a, a bit of a caveat or a bit of a suggestion also and how we can incorporate it into most of you organizations who are doing things and that's, that's what I want to contribute. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Uh, thank you very much. Emmanuel Yada is my name. Um, I'm from Uganda, but I work at uh, the African Union Commission. Uh, my question is uh, about uh, the CCTLD. I think the last presenter who was talking about it. Uh, in Africa, I think uh, most of the, th uh, the problem we have is uh, uh, the, the price like the price of those domains. And I think it is why most of us use dot .com. Uh, uh, is there a way you, uh, you are trying to harmonize the prices of the, the CCTLD domain names? 
another thing I'm a software engineer, so I'm a developer. I, I always interact with those domains. Thank you. Thank you very much. This one will be for Barak later on. Uh, Uh, my name is Naza Nicholas Kirama. I am currently working with the uh, Internet Society Tanzania chapter, and I am also the project manager for Tanzania Digital Inclusion Program, out of which we have been able to manage to create a one community uh, network innovation hub, connected uh, 10 schools, um, 120 people connected to broadband internet, and a police station for the first time, I think, in Tanzania has been connected to broadband internet and two health centers. I have got two submissions. Number one is about the IP resources in Africa. If we are talking about um, IP resources, which are managed by Afrinic, these are important for the digital Africa. The future digital Africa depends on these resources. Unfortunately, uh, I, I, I don't want to go deeply into what is happening to Afrinic. But I think one of the important work that co this coalition should do is to make sure Afrinic moves from Mauritius to Ethiopia. <laughs> that is my proposition. Because, because Afrinic has been uh, an orphan child and being an entity that secures our future digital Africa, it has been left as an orphan to be on its own. Why? Because it was supposed to be protected. It was supposed to be given a diplomatic status. So I cannot just wake up you know, in the morning and start suing the very important entity that is critical for you know, IP number resources for Africa. So that is my first submission. Number two, yesterday when I was, uh, I, I spoke during the, um, the leadership panel, I suggested the world to have a global fund on connectivity. If we are saying we need to connect all people and all schools, how are we going to do this if will not bring all my stakeholders together, have money to make sure that we connect all these villages. People in the villages, they need internet so that we can discover all these Bill Gates and the Bezos that are there in the African villages. So that is critical. So my proposition to, to, to the uh, Coalition for Digital Africa, we need to connect all of them and there is a lot of money which is sitting uh, somewhere. I don't know uh, which location, but I am sure if we are, we are about to connect you know, the schools, because in the end, the access to digital opportunities are going to be able to eliminate you know, family poverty and give all these uh, young people of Africa an opportunity to be able to create prosperity through internet. That would be my submission. Thank you. you keep uh, yes, please. Uh, two more. And, uh, okay, three, because we haven't had a lady. But, uh, yeah. And, okay. uh, oh, yes, okay, we so, have online um, questions. My question keep is very short. short. Please, my you. name is Caleb Obundele. And I'm um, affiliated more with um, African Academic Network on Internet Policy and ISOC Nigerian Chapter. Um, so, two questions. Um, I see that on the coalition, we don't have civil society. 
And if we want to say it's a multi-stakeholder approach to doing things on the coalition, we need to have those who do not have that equal finger to be on the table, which usually is the civil society, those who we basically be talking about the human rights, digital inclusion stuff. So um, it's just a proposition to make sure that we have the civil society, not just the academia, um, on the table as well, right? Um, the second question also is, um, I know ICANN has um, a grant which um, they just proposed, and I think the webinar is probably tomorrow, or maybe later today. Um, is there a way they are implementing some, or maybe allocating some of those grants um, to the coalition to make sure that it gets funding and all the organizations that are coming together make sure that this coalition does not die because of funding? Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll get yeah. online question then. Thank you, ver thank you very much. So I have a, a first um, question. <coughs> so it's coming from the Abuja um, uh, note. Any intervention to help develop the DNS marketplace in Africa is very important and welcome. Does the program provide a pathway for major, for majority of domain names resellers who are locally term registrars in our local communities, but not I but are not I can accredited? Yeah, to becoming contracted parties within I can within the three years. I, th I think it's a more global. It's not a global. It's not a digital coalition question, but. And uh, I have another one. Hello, everyone. My name is Afiona Songa, CEO Tespok. That's the Technology Service Providers Association of Kenya. I would just like to put an ask to the coalition to work closely with uh, particularly the ITU and the ATU uh, because I think within there lies a solution to our being able to connect our African communities. We have, we got, we adapted the universal access funds from that the ITU system. But in our part of the world, if we are honest with ourselves, they are being politicized, they are being taken over by political systems that are not keen on achieving this agenda which means we have to work differently. And that means that we need to consider how these funds as opposed to being put into the regulators where political interests come in and control and manage and put them operations at a standstill for three years, nothing is working, they are collecting money. So when you look at the kitty, it has so much money, but nobody is getting connected. Nothing is being implemented. Yet, these administration costs being spent out of that kitty. When our political governments change, new regimes come and say, oh, there's money there that can do one, two, three. And they start announcing on what they want to do. And that is not the purpose for which universal access was really set up. And to be able to deal with that, I think we need to bring it out of there and find a strategy that can work either with the telcos, with the regulators, but a different mechanism to connect the unconnected. Other is this effort is going to be a talk shop without much going on, like the USAC has been for the last 10 plus years. We are not seeing results. We need to see results. I'll be really quick. My name is Hadi Al-Miniawi. I'm from uh, Egypt. Uh, and first, I, w I would like to congratulate us all uh, for um, this coalition. I was very happy with the comment of the gentleman of um, uh, saying that let's also have civil society uh, on the table. Uh, so uh, now we have civil society, academia, and institutional bodies. I would say also let's not forget the uh, simple uh, end internet user. Uh, let's have them also on the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Benga, the last one, please. Thank you. Um, 
Hi everyone, this is Arsene Tongali from the DRC um, with Root International, which is a civil society organization. So I think I have a basic question, like two basic questions. One would be, how is the coalition managed? Is there any secretariat uh, uh, to which you know everyone can go to and you know whenever we need to, we, we are seeking any clarification, we do have any questions. Second is, uh, who, which, who, what are your type of members? I mean, what type of members uh, do you need in terms of uh, joining the coalition? Is it only the F A AF stars or anyone else uh, can join the coalition? And third and last, um, I think uh, I'm glad you have universities represented which is good uh, because I'm very keen on, on capacity building. And although the representative from the universities mentioned mostly infrastructures, but I think, uh, I don't know whether you have any plan on dealing with uh, capacity building like digital literacy uh, bits within universities because I know also universities can have a role to play outside of universities and I think you should consider capacity building and digital literacy as part of your strategy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Arsène. So um, I'm going to start with um, uh, Joran on uh, one of the questions that was about. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you can make the round if you want. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Please. It's always nice to speak to someone who is an active in open source, by the way. Uh, I have a history in that. Um, not very successful, but I had a history in open source. So, um, and this answers a couple of questions. So, Fiona, this is not, you know it's not a talk shop because you were actually there when we introduced the, um, the cluster in, in Kenya. And, and, and today, I just checked, we have about 5,000 requests into that cluster per second right now. A capacity that didn't exist three weeks ago here in Africa. The whole point with this is that, the whole point is that we are not looking for another talk shop. We want projects. Everything you see here are things that we set up, tangible things to do. That's the whole point. And, and anyone who brings in, any organization who brings in something we think we can do. And we have more things in line uh, that we are working with different organizations that we're going to do things for. But it's very technology driven. Policies are set by peop other people. And you in Africa are doing a great job with that. This is technology driven. We're trying to l look at this from technology perspective. We talk about the ability for people to use their own language, their own scripts. We talk about increasing the capacity on a very local level. That is the importance of this thing. You spend four days talking about everything else that happens on top of internet. This is the actual internet, as I call it. Uh, whoever talked about the difference with the internet and the platforms, I like that one. Uh, I got a question about, yes, we have, I can, what I can does in this really is we support, we, we contribute with the support stuff um, that will help the, the coalition partners to interact with each other. It's important to know that we don't, we do this as I can, we provide these resources um, and Pierre who is there is, the, is the, internally the project leader responsible for this. So that's what we really provide. And then we participate and, and engage in some of the projects, but there will be projects where ICANN is not part of, also because we could outside our own mission. There was a question about the grants. Yes, uh, today, I've, I thought it was yesterday, but I'm completely lost when it comes to time. So about six o'clock local time, we have an information about a grant program we set up. And thanks to everyone, I also have to say that comes from the auction proceeds from the last round. Um, we have $100 million plus there, uh, which we will contribute to with grants. We will give that money, will, uh, the, the, the sign of our programs comes from the ICANN community, and it's targeted that you come with projects that something that we can finance through those uh, grants. Um, so it will be open up, I'd, if you look at the web, um, uh, web info today, you will know what, how the structure and when it will open up. But it's a program open for, and I would be very pleased if we would see grants going here. Uh, did I miss anything that I should answer anything about? I think I picked them all, didn't I? Yeah, one more thing. So one of the small thing that ICANN is doing, is actually one of the biggest things we've done in a long time, is that we are going into a process where we want to have more top level domains, uh, domain names, um, and we are right now in the process, uh, after a long period of time from ICANN uh, community work, um, where we, on the 14th, 
are going to start about the next generation of top-level domains. The intention of those top-level domains is not to have more English top-level domains where you read from left to right sort of with a dot. The intention of that is to make sure that those top-level domains are for regions, and Africa is one we often talk about. We would like to see more African uh, top-level domains managed and operated here in Africa that so support your communities, your businesses, and your lives. Um, so I think that also has a question as well. So on the 14th of December, we have uh, the next big information about that as well. And anyone who's interested, please join. Thank you very much, Joran. For the sake of time, I'm going to go very quickly. Um, uh, Pierre, you wanted to take one of the questions? Yeah? Thank you. Thank you very much for the questions. And uh, uh, we do have many of them. We took down notes. And uh, hopefully, if we didn't give uh, you answers, we'll be in touch uh, with you. And definitely, it's about actions, as uh, Yoran is saying. Um, there was a question about how we do, um, I mean, where the secretariat, and uh, yeah, but briefly, um, the plan is to, I can will be supporting the secretariat, you know, which certainly is going to be out of our engagement office in Nairobi. And uh, <laughs> are, we are we voting here? <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, in terms of who could qualify to be a member, um, definitely it's quite open. But we just need to abide by a few guiding principles that are already there and that you can get them on the uh, website. The coalition has launched its website two, uh, two, I think, yeah, two days ago. You, you have the, the link to it, you can go there. Information is there for you to really understand what it is about and how eventually you could engage with us. So yeah, I would like to say this, thank you. Uh, yeah, there was quickly a question about Afrinic. <laughs> there you go. So, I, I want to be very, very. I mean, we're all concerned about the situation uh, with Afrinic, but it's an um, and and there's a history of that, and some parts of the member of this panel here has a history there. But I want to emphasize. I mean, I c we see Afrinic as a part of our family. Uh, it, it, I mean, we're all part of this ecosystem together with the RERs, uh, together with the top level domain operators, together with the country code operators. We're all in this uh, ITF and EIB. Good, we are so good with acronyms. And ISOC, of course. We're all part of, of the same ecosystem. And we, therefore, there's sort of a, uh, we have a joint concern. The important is that this is, an, uh, this, is, this is an African problem, and it's just solved by Africans. And, and it's your communities that should be active in Afrinic to make sure it continues to work. The discussion about if it's going to be in which country, where it is, is very much something. I pledge to everybody to be active in the Afric and the Afrinic community. That's where you can make a real difference. They need their help and support. They need you to be active there. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Joran. And uh, as an African in the space, you know, taking off my ITU hat, I would like to tell everybody that uh, it is absolutely crucial because what we're talking about here basically won't be if those numbers are not around. So we need to shape up. Yeah. We need to be there. All right? Thank you. Um, Prof? One of the reasons why the universities are part of this coalition is for us to be able to focus on improving the technical capacity of higher education institutions. We hope that through our involvement in this in this coalition, we'll be able to focus on capacity building. I mentioned earlier on of our interest in the inruns. We hope that this coalition will help us to enhance the effectiveness of the inruns. You will notice that our youths, the youth population in Africa is the highest in the continent, and therefore we need to enhance the capacity of our youths to make use of the internet to create prosperity within the continent. So the university is central, and we'll be focusing on that, which you mentioned. Thank you. Okay. 
Barak, can you go ahead on the AFTLD? And then, John, you, I would like you to come in on the USF and uh, some of the things that you see you know, governments doing to you know, be part of this process by making sure that there are funds. One of the uh, initiatives, for example, that the, you know, the African Union really has right now with the UN is all about also mobilizing internal resources. You know, we, we can't continue always thinking that you know, the, the, the outside world is going to be the one funding all of these things. So there are ways of making sure that you know, the monies uh, can come out, whether it's the USFs of this world or something else. So um, uh, Barack first, and then John, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, and Rachel. I'll try to be brief. Emmanuel. Uh, on the price of uh, CCTLDs, uh, I think the challenge that has been stated is uh, be involved in uh, your local CCTLD. One of the models that uh, we have been promoting for CCTLD management is what is referred to as a 3R model, where the registry focuses on its core business of managing the zone file. We build a registrar community that acts as an interface between the registry and internet users uh, who are uh, basically registrants, for lack of a better word. And um, this is what we encourage. As you can see, we have a clear demarcation of roles and responsibilities uh, that uh, each player in the community uh, has to play. I think one of the objectives of the CCTLD registry track in the coalition will be on business plan and marketing, um, which is aimed at growing the numbers at our local CCTLDs our focus in the past 10 years, between 2010 and 2020, was building technical competence, which we have achieved, and now we want to build business and also make sure that the registries are actually sustainable. And uh, the resellers and the registrars are in this room, and this includes community network operators, who are the ones dealing with registrants at community level. Just to state that programs have been there, which have seen the number of ICANN accredited registrars grow from about two in, 20, uh, in, 200, in 2010 to 11. Actually, they're about 15 as we speak. Uh, and uh, this number keeps growing. The number of resellers on the continent uh, is over close to 1,000 if you look at all the CCTLDs. And any of you in the room can also be domain name resellers. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and Rachel. For on the on the issue of uh, universal access funds, I think the history is 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 varied. There are quite a good number of success stories. Uh, there are also certainly uh, areas where there's been uh, quite some challenges, especially from uh, the governmental side. And I think as the ICT community. We, we, we are the contributors of these funds, uh, either to the regulators uh, directly or to institutions that are established for the management of these funds. And it behooves us to speak a bit more. Uh, I think that has been the missing link. Some, uh, at least where I've been involved, some of these institutions are purely governmental, whereas operators and network organizations are contributing, they don't sit in those boards for perhaps reasons of, of conflict of interest. But I think the model that seems to work best for me is where those who are contributing uh, to the funds also sit and determine how the funds are allocated. And so I think there needs to be a robust engagement between the community uh, members themselves and organizations that manage these funds and to see more transparency. I think, I think the point you're making, Madam, essentially is that there's quite a bit of resources that are internal in Africa for management and development of, of internet and ICTs in Africa. Uh, certainly, uh, there seems to me uh, to be a notion uh, sometimes or oftentimes wrongly that, that it will come from elsewhere. I don't think it will. Nobody gives you free lunch. In fact, if you get it twice, uh, that may be heralding the end of you. Uh, there's sufficient resources uh, in terms of how we manage them uh, is the issue. And I think the community needs to be a lot more involved uh, with uh, the sort of access funds 
that have been uh, instituted in Africa for purposes of, of internet and indeed ICT development. I think I want to end there. The issue of AfriNIC is, in my view, going to take a lot more sanity than just a physical location of offices from one place uh, to the other. I think, as Goran says, it is our organization and we know the challenges that exist there. I think it is not the challenge of a physical location, but the challenge of a lot more involvement and transparency amongst ourselves in terms of, of uh, 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 the institution itself. So as Goran says, let's, let's, let's sort it out ourselves. The physical location, I think, is less and a, a bit of an apologies way of looking at the, the core root of the problem. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. The, the proposal to to remove it, to remove Afrinec from Mauritius, is the height of contempt for that jurisdiction. Ah, I'm Paul Huell. I happen to be the uh, CEO and uh, director of Crystalweb, which happens to be one of the companies which has an injunction preventing Afrinec from turning itself into an absolute disaster zone. And the reality is that Afrinex's problem is a history of corruption and a refusal to engage with its members. The reality is that instead of holding an election to get a constituent board going, the organization tried to exclude competent and proper people from that election. That resulted in court action. And yes, court action is unpleasant and it's not nice and so on and so forth. But when there is a court order that requires you to act in a particular way, you don't act contemptuously of that court and then try to leave the jurisdiction of that country because you're not getting your way. The correct thank, way to solve you. things is a meeting. True, true. I, I hear you. I hear you. And uh, I think I hear the pain of everybody who is in this room on that subject. So, uh, but as Pierre said, or uh, John, you know, it's going to need a lot more sanity, you know, and not throwing words and not going to courts and all of that to make things work. So, let's face it, we have a work to do. We have a lot of work to do. And we need to sit down and talk about this, okay? As a community, absolutely. So, thank you very much. And uh, I, I look. We, we, this, this is not the court, okay? <laughs> We're here. We are actually here to try and make digital infrastructure a reality in this region. It is absolutely crucial and important. Those numbers are part of it, and each one of us needs to feel not only responsible but accountable to making it work for the 1.5 billion people in Africa who are waiting for this to happen. All right? So that's what we're here for. So thank you very much. And um, I think we're going to wrap up. One of the things that uh, uh, I would like everybody to know is that this is a lounge. There are quite a few principles on, uh, in terms of what this coalition is going to be. There are ways to join it. Everybody should be part of this. It is about making sure that we truly get somewhere. It is about making sure that civil society, private sector, governments, and everybody, we're all in this together. We can no longer, as I said from the beginning, go alone because it's not going to go anywhere. So for each and every one of us, take responsibility. Join the coalition. Bring your voice. Bring what you think you want to see out of it. Work. Let's work together and let's make it happen. Thank you very much for having been with us this morning uh, or this afternoon. <laughs> Yeah, it's already afternoon. And uh, truly, I'm truly hoping that we will see a lot of you joining the coalition and, uh, uh, you know, moving from, uh, as uh, Barak said, from 90%, for example, on institutional infrastructure in our countries to 100% and more for the people of this continent. Thank you very much.